This is an article cut to the New York Times that I've not read. Re I've not read just yet, but the headline alone pissed me off, especially based on the person that wrote it, because I feel like she's got a little of an agenda against the old streetwear community. This is courtesy of the New York Times, and the headline reads as follows: Streetwear is dead. Long live fashion. They are actually one and the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. This woman, what's her name? Um, Vanessa Friedman. She she doesn't. She kind of sounds like a bit of a hater when it comes to streetwear. It kind of makes sense again, maybe because she's, you know, a long time fashion critic. And I've always felt like fashion people tolerated the streetwear community more than they ever accepted them and welcomed them in, which is the reason why we saw such harsh reactions to Kanye West when he launched his first label in Paris. The first, first one that he kind of put his own money behind, that everyone kind of hated. We saw a lot of you know, pushback against Virgil when he was doing his stuff at Off White and obviously then went on to Louis Vuitton. We've just seen loads of kind of pushback against that streetwear sort of aesthetic. They don't like it at all, um, for whatever reason. My reason, my my point, or I've, I've always said, I feel like the street, the kind of fashion's rejection of streetwear, or the kind of hesitancy to kind of accept it as a kind of living thing that maybe can just coexist alongside of it, or as a necessary evil, or as something that is essentially the main thing that's maybe holding the industry together, or maybe just holding the industry up a high, has been able to kind of allow these brands and these houses to become somewhat relevant again. You look at what Matthew Williams is doing, uh, Givenchy, and all that kind of thing. Like that aesthetic is really important. I think in terms of of like being able to contrast some of the more avant-garde type things that exist in fashion you need to have a yin and a yang but i feel like some people in fashion feel as if the streetwear community are maybe too black and brown for them so whenever they say fashion's returning the return to tailoring i always hear it as a dog whistle that we don't want these you know these kicks these upstart guys that didn't go to the right college that wear trainers and stuff that have too many tattoos that listen to rap music like we don't want that we want fashion to be a particular way because think about it also for all the think about it this way for all the influence streetwear has had on fashion and for all the notable black and brown figures in streetwear who have kind of transferred over to fashion they're only men really that have kind of been able to do it they don't really embrace the women. You don't really see them embracing all the like IG baddies, all the IG models we have, all the female rappers we have. They 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 go for a particular a particular you know silhouette. Maybe a Flo Millie might get more endorsements, but they're not really going to go for an Asian doll. Why is that? Why don't they talk to an Ari? Why isn't an Ari getting a, a Vogue editorial? If 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 those guys are important to the culture, which they are in terms of hip hop, in terms of how they transcend, for whatever reason, like it or not these baby mothers and the female rappers are also an important part of the culture. Why are they not being put front and forward and center? Because they don't fit because they're too voluptuous. They're too curvy. Um, they, they don't like that anyway. They want you to look a particular way, which is why we have this weird thing at the moment where they fetishize the, you know, really, really dark skinned girls in, in Africa and stuff who look a particular way. But then also in terms of frame, when you take away their skin tone or their race or where they're from, they kind of look the same as all the other girls they cast in Europe. Anyway, there's no real difference. That and even that they only have a particular slots for them. There's only a, a particular allotment of like black models that exist in that level anyway. So I, I just feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of kind of, um, people not saying stuff with their chest you know if you, if you say what you really feel about streetwear let's get that out of the way so that we can actually have a cool conversation but until you say that i just feel like everything it's all like you know it's all subtle little innuendos and little things people are saying to be a little bit clever and a little bit sneaky but in general i just don't think they like the niggas in their space you know i just think that's the case in this regard and with Vanessa freeman i definitely think that's the case because she's always kind of popping out these sound of weird street where is dead sort of like innuendos and jabs all over the place actually let me double check before i read the article i'm pretty sure she has said some other stuff about streetwear in the past that i probably haven't liked let me see let me see if I can get this up here. I'm going to put it up. It's on screen. Yeah, it's on screen. That's her profile. Let's get her address here. Boom. VVV Friedman. Let's type in streetwear here onto the search bar. Um, let's say, oh yeah, I hate that. Innit? Anything to do with parody teas and merch, I hate. I already hate Palace. I think it's a fucking dog shit brand and all of that kind of fetishization of working class people when you're not working class and that cosplaying as somebody that you're from the ends when you're clearly not with the sovereigns and the gold teeth and the loafers with the tracksuit bottoms, you can go and dance somewhere. But fair enough, they've got their brand, do your thing, but then taking it and flipping it and putting parents all over the trifig, um, whatever triangle thing, and then living with my parents is like, whatever. Same goes for the free Palestine thing as well. Like get your own logo. Don't, like, what are you doing? Like, I don't know. Even though if it, I'm sure it involves somebody from there, but I don't care. It's fucking garbage. 
um yeah anyway let's move on advanced search you go here then you put i think it's an account where's the account bit there you go from these accounts right and then you say streetwear is it there and say these words no streetwear let's see i'm pretty sure she says some other derogatory things about what i call streetwear so yeah virgil was right here that article she got another thing about streetwear here another thing she says in the most extreme example of streetwear and i fashion takeover or fashion's desperation desperate search for relevance as if that's a bad thing it's a business why wouldn't you want to be relevant the whole reason about being relevant is so you can sell things to people that exist nowadays that's what relevancy is what's the point like relevancy as if that's a bad thing like what um bali the very Classic Swiss luxury brand has land named um, Rugi um, as the founder of Rude, its new creative director. Again, not really saying it her chess, but she's not liking it. A tweet from 2016. Vetterman just elected a guest member of Couture gives new meaning to haute streetwear. Snobby. Again, not saying of her chest. Another article here. Tom Ford stands up to streetwear at New York Fashion Week with an exercise in nostalgia and review. So what is standing up to streetwear? Standing up to the darkies? Is that what it means? Come on, Vanessa, say it with your chest, darling. Another one. Um, the time the time of ceding high ground to street... Ceding high ground like we're in a war. It's flipping clothes. We can coexist in both places. What is this? We can coexist at the same time, sorry. The, the, the tweet from 2019 says as follows. The time of ceding ground... Uh, seeding high ground to streetwear the time when designers um blabbered on about just clothes is, uh, is at an end just so 20 just so the 20 no, just so the 20 teens 2020 is coming time to get dressed reviews of louis vuitton Mew Mew, and the whole dang season so an elevated i like just let's read the article anyway this this lady talks out of her ass but let's read the article it says in late 2019, Virgil Abloh, the boundary smashing designer who died last year, gave an interview days in which he declared the end of streetwear. He said as follows, I would definitely say it's going to die, you know, like it's time we will be up. He said, immediately endearing a mass freak out, not just in fashion, but among pretty much anyone who had seen him as a prophet to a new contemporary dress code. One that smashed the rules of the old establishment, so finding power in, street, in, sweat, in sweatshirts, sneakers rather than suits. Suddenly he was changing his mind. To be honest, again, RIP the dead. Um, our Virgil legend always have a special place in my heart you know we had a very short time together working on a little project a long long time ago and he went on to do amazing things so he, he you know I'm going to rate him for the beginning no problem with that but let's be honest Virgil never wanted to be the streetwear guy he always wanted to get to fashion even though he says you know the the fashion thing smash fashion with a capital F and he was like high and low and trying to play both sides in the end or in the from the beginning he, Virgil and Kanye's modus operandi, you know, their, their, their dream was always to be accepted within that fashion area. And of course, the best way to get in there is streetwear because that's the easiest way to kind of showcase your ideas. If you want to flex your design prowess or your graphic design in, or your graphic design references, whatever it may be, the best way to do it is to print a t-shirt, right? Make a hoodie, design a cap, um you know uh i don't know program a, a club night do the act do the kind of interior of a, of, of a pop-up or something those are great ways to kind of get your ideas across quickly without having to wait for samples or this sort of stuff you can get it done in basically the same day if you need be so streetwear is a good avenue to do that but the sensibilities of streetwear are so fine-tuned and so deep-rooted that they can just exist on its own it doesn't need fashion obviously it's a good to have a little to and fro like when you see those kind of like um, editorials with like the hot um, model girl standing next to the skater with his cigarette out it's cool to see that contrast for the most part but the clients don't the customers don't exist in the same area the references aren't from the same place for the most part but they do have some sort of similarities here and there but in general they do kind of operate within their own worlds there are plenty of streetwear brands who have no desire to be even mainstream or to cross over to fashion in the same ways there are some fashion brands that have no desire to make sneakers or to make hooded t-shirts so or to make hood, uh, hoodies or t-shirts and stuff they don't care about that kind of thing i remember one of the kind of legendary stories i remember back in the day i remember when the kind of logo mania thing was maybe popping off a lot in kind of fashion for the most part i don't know if your story is true but i do remember someone saying something along the lines of when phoebe philo was at celine she actually designed um her kind of um cla her kind of classic staple t-shirt right she kind of designed it from the ground up like what she would want a t-shirt to look like and it was like a really big seller in the store but they never advertised it it was never available on the racks you had to kind of ask the sales system and they'd pull it out from the back and it had like celine written on the front or something i remember hearing that story if that's not true or if that is slightly true 
that goes to show that back then there was always kind of this appreciation that streetwear was one thing and this is another thing and not, not that you don't want to cheapen what you're doing but it's not the same thing so we don't want to get the message muddied up by you walking in and seeing like a whole rack full of long sleeves and t-shirts doesn't make any sense so you offer different things but it's also like i said to, like going i'm kind of rambling but the whole point i'm trying to say is that virgil isn't necessarily the person that i would go to for all things concerning streetwear he is one voice that represents what streetwear is but in terms of what quintessentially is streetwear there are far better voices out there that i could tell you whether or not it's going to die or not personally i don't think it ever will die because streetwear is essentially a youth a movement a, a movement for the for the youth maybe whatever it may be called so as long as you have kids coming up who kind of feel as if they're not being represented in the mainstream fashion world they always going to be streetwear because that's the best place you can come express your ideas because those same kids, if they're if they're rejecting, imagine if they're rejecting people that look like Kanye West and they look like Virgil, or they're having hesitancy at people that look like Matthew Williams and Heron Preston, they look pretty straight laced and decent dudes. Imagine what they're gonna think when some kid from LA rocks up with a face tattoo, you know, smoking weed all the time, blasting rap music from his G wagon. How are they gonna react to that? If they're pushing back against Matthew Williams and Heron Preston, what are they gonna think about some little Zan looking dude who has this streetwear brand that's turning over millions a year, selling great hoodies and t shirts? They're not gonna really welcome him much either. So those guys are really probably like, you know what, I'd rather stay in my own lane here, let the fashion people do their thing, and that's maybe, I'll maybe dibble and dabble and spend my money over there, but I'm not really interested in trying to be a part of that world and that's perfectly fine but again they're not you know I, I don't know why you would take one person's word for the streetwear thing but then when the streetwear thing happens in your scene suddenly you're kind of tend of i don't know let, let me just let's continue let's read the article Mr. Avalo ended up um, walking um, his statement back a bit. He told Vogue that he wasn't saying streetwear would be gone. Um, it was always come back. But two years after he made his prediction, there's little question that it's right. Streetwear is indeed dead. No, it isn't. It can't be dead. There's too many kids out there buying sneakers and wanting to look fresh on the weekend for it to ever to be dead. There's too many kids out there wanting to skateboard. Like, what are you talking about? Streetwear is essentially anything that you wear that isn't fancy. Anything you wear that isn't fancy is streetwear. From a parka to a hoodie to a hat to whatever. It's what you wear day to day in the street. Hence the term fucking streetwear. So how would it ever die? It doesn't make any sense. If humans don't exist in the world, maybe then it will die. Does The real question is, is high fashion alive? Do people actually care about looking avant-garde? Do people actually care about what the references of what their brands are coming from? Do people actually care about who's in charge of what house? Do people actually care about what 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 they do? Like DNG can go and insult the whole nation of flipping, I don't know, of China, what not it may be, right? And people still will queue up and buy their wares. Why? Because they don't care about that sort of stuff. Fashion's relevancy in the cultural conversation has gone people just want it for the clout the societal clout okay i've got gucci and i've got this one but do they care about what it stands for what the references are who they're trying to speak to what they represent they don't care they just want it for the clout they want it for the image thing they want it to make themselves feel good for their self-esteem but when you want messages you want something that represents something and you want something that's a community based something that's actually um that's got some weight to it you go to streetwear because that's where it is at because you can speak to the owner directly via dms you can pop into the store and see the people that have actually inspired the brand that he's working on you can feel the ambience around everything it's all hand done it's all cut and sew it's all kind of tactile come on man continues um it says as follows um i can't even define it anymore said rb lee the vice president of content strategy at hypebeast the website founded 2005 as a streetwear found blog that became a lifestyle brand onto itself went public in 2016 fun fact i started working for hypebeast as a freelance editor or whatever contributing writer in 20 2008 and obviously I fumbled the bag because I didn't keep up with them and keep in contact, big up Kevin Ma. I didn't keep up with them. And now they've gone to do big and better things. And here I am talking into you, talking to you through a USB mic and a webcam and a USB webcam. I'm living a good life. <laughs> it continues and said, it's not that, it's not that, um, um, sorry, it continues. It's not that as assumed when Mr. Abler first spoke, everyone has gotten tired of hoodies and t-shirts and sneakers that were the basic building blocks of the sector known as streetwear, though not by may any means its defining characteristics. It's that those hoodies and t-shirts and whatever that have become so fully absorbed by high fashion establishment that the line between streetwear and fashion has effectively disappeared. Streetwear has become fashion or fashion has become streetwear depending on how you want to look at it. You know how I want to look at it? I want to look at it and say this. As a journalist, she's not saying anything. She's not reporting on something. She's not actually, it's not, it's not an op-ed. It's not a journalistic piece. It's just a nothing burger. So you're not saying it's dead. You're not saying it's alive. You're not saying fashion needs it. 
you know, saying fashion doesn't need it. What are you saying then? Not saying anything. Just a whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of meandering for the sake of meandering. This old lady just like, you know, shouting at the moon that all these kids are coming in where they're flipping hoodies and exaggerated trainers and their crazy patterns. It's like, let it go. They can coexist. It's not an evil or. It's and. It's always and. It continues. It simply, it has simply become the platform on which the whole system stands, said Demna, the creator director of Balenciaga. Last July, Balenciaga held its first couture show in 50 years to wild acclaim and also a sixth popular brand on Hypebeast. See, even Demna is saying it. And Demna could easily, if he wanted to, distance himself from Streetwear and say, nah, that stuff isn't me. But even he knows what the truth is. He continues. So her impressive look there from 2020. It says people who buy one are buying the other. The designers of one have become designers of the other, and the values of each and cool and comfort and community merge into one. The basis of streetwear are the basis of every fashion line, as much as jackets and ball gowns. Um, it is a big shift in when ready to wear merged with made to measure in 1960s and 70s, and yet while the evolution has been talking taking place for a while, the streetwear de de designation lingers. As fashion week dawns, as many designers, it's time to bury it. What? This is honestly some nonsense article. What does it even mean? I don't eat. I'd, I'd like to have a conversation with my community about why anyone ever decided to call it streetwear in the first place, said Rugi, the founder of Rude, the Los Angeles label that specializes in crossbreeding luxury and streetwear, who was named creative director of Swiss label Bali early this year. Bali, sorry. <clears throat> you know what I've noticed also? Whoever makes it, like, whoever makes it in a big way from street, from the, who has like streetwear roots, they always say shit like this. Oh, why do we call it street? Let's redefine it. Uh, 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 uh. Like, I get it. Well done, Rude. Well done, Rugi. Congratulations, right? I'm, 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 I'm a supporter of the guy. I think his brand is sick. He's been able to take that brand. Like I said, he's been, he went from making flipping t-shirts with, you know, um, flips of Marlboro lights on it to suddenly going over and designing for, you know, a proper fashion house. Congratulations, do your thing. But I hate when people go and kind of reach passions new and turn back and start poo-pooing where they came from. Just allow it. It was your basis. It, I think the only person that's not done that has been Matthew Williams. He's been like, okay, cool. That's where I come from, but I'm now trying to elevate and take what I've learned there and apply it to Givenchy. But that's still where my roots are. Fair enough. There's no need to turn around and say, oh, why do we even call it that for? Let's redefine it from about... It's like, nah, brother, allow it. There's too many, there's too many people's livelihoods are basically f funded by streetwear, right? That that exist there like without needing to conversate with you guys you don't even know who they are they're brands that i don't even know about that this is only on instagram and stuff that are in a really really small little subculture or sub scene whatever it may be <clears throat> how could you ever say it's dying or how can you say we need to redefine it or that it doesn't mean what it needs it says that it's pretty self-explanatory term like streetwear it's, it's it's pretty um timeless in that respect as well it describes everything that you wear that isn't fancy it's streetwear what could, what was it say there Harry Besson, the, the founder of Opinions, the eponymous label, um, who began his career as a member of Bintrill, an art collective um, co-founded by Ablo Agreed. He said, I've never identified with it or wanted to use it. Oh, come on, Heron Preston, man. It's as if, the funny thing is about these guys as well, they don't understand. It's not as if like the fashion people accept them either. You're just a necessary evil in the times of when there's a lull, when they're not able to sell 700 pound pleated trousers the novelty of having a guy that prints, you know, birds on his t-shirt is fun. But the moment you're not relevant to them anymore, they're going to dish you to the side anyway. And you're going to have to come back begging and pleading and trying to design for your streetwear core audience, who are the ones that basically, you know, I would say made you, but are the ones that are basically funding your brand for the most part. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine there's a big um, base of fashion girls that are going out and saying, yeah, I need to get the new um, hair and press piece. Not really. It's mostly people that he's taken from his streetwear kind of roots who he's been able to kind of take along with him to the journey who are maybe aging up the same time that they're kind of, he's obviously gaining more experience and becoming more mature in his brand and his offering is becoming more diverse and he's offering him that sort of stuff. But it's not as if like fashion, fashion people who are really into it with a capital F are paying any mind to what you do. So I, uh, anyway, I never identified with it. I wanted to use it, he said. Um, da, 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 who's part of New Guards Group. I was forced to because in some ways there's an instant invitation into a culture. There's all sorts of associations that come up when you say that word. This is a thing with Heron Preston. I love him too, but he doesn't want to identify himself with, this, with, with sneakerheads, even though that's where he came from. He used to be on Nike Talk and selling shoes and shit and whatever. He doesn't want to identify with streetwear, even though that's exactly where he came Even though he's not a fashion dude in the first part, he doesn't close. He's always been more, I, always, I always thought of Heron being more of like an ideas guy or a 
design guy, but I never thought of him being a closed dude. So it's pretty sick. He's been able to kind of take whatever talent he has in that respect and kind of apply it to the field of streetwear or the field of making clothes. Someone could say, oh, clothes and streetwear is, to, is, is just another kind of means, a kind of, you know, uh, what do you call it? Canvas to express yourself, cool. But why are you saying this, man? Like, Why? Anyway, streetwear, the fashion sector, was born in 1980s and 90s, um, intersection of skate and surf culture and hip hop and underground art. All of these sectors are still existing and thriving now. Skateboarding is bigger than it ever has been. Surfing has had a renaissance with the young generation. Hip hop bigger than what it is be. Art is having a renaissance, even if you just, you know, you want to extend it to NFTs. So to, to, to kind of sit there and say streetwear is dying is insane because these sectors are all youth culture things and when you come up as a kid and you're trying to find something cool to get into these are these are usually the buckets that you fall into one or the other or maybe all of the same or maybe you swap out some of the musical genres so as long as kids exist streetwear will always exist like what is this talk anyway so the reaction against an industry in which the creators could not see themselves or their value system of course do you think a kid sees themselves in what Vanessa friedman writes really come on um, it's godparents were Stone Stushi who founded Stussy in 1980 Nigo who opened Bathe and Ape in 1993 My Go James Jebbia who opened 1994 My Go all designers without formal fashion training in the art sector or ateliers exactly even though they hate this when Mr Jebbia received the menswear award of the Castle of Fashion in 2018 he, he was said I've never considered Supreme to be a fashion club company or myself a designer yet their use of graphics with a casual clothing with casual clothing as a canvas became an instant and badge of belonging and collectible they issued the filters of their runway and glossy magazines for direct com communication generated obsessive interest via secret product drops and otherwise used rising social technologies to blow a raspberry um, at the established order but just as skating and snowboarding became official sports so their uniforms uh, seeped into the ages of the mainstream of new industries and them creatures of communication. Dress becomes, oh, she's just talking loads of shit here. The old guard, desperate to stay relevant, went from flirting with the outsiders in 2017, the Supreme Collaboration and Ralph Lauren collaborating with Palace to giving them the keys to the castle to help the streetwear market as estimated worth of 185 billion. God almighty. It continues, when Abla was named, that's his director, the pivotal moment. Brother, she said anything here that's that's flipping. She says nothing of note here. Them that calls the idea of that streetwear should be somehow separate from high fashion, a synonym of this dysfunction of the industry. Thank you. It has become an integral part of fashion and it is here to stay. Um, uh, he said, the real meaning of streetwear, after all, is simply that it's worn on the street, which is everything. Indeed, as far as Mr. Uh, Rugi from Root says, is concerned, uh, we are at a talk what we are talking about when we talk about streetwear is clothes that serve people's needs it's a snapshot of the current term <clears throat> what a waste of time this article was i'm sorry to read this i should have read this beforehand she says absolutely nothing in the article nothing of note she roped in a couple of people from the streetwear scene or who represent our scene to basically come back and poo poo what we did and poo poo what the what streetwear did for their careers because they both say they don't want to represent imagine would Heron Preston have ever got his own label if he didn't have any you know it, it, li linking or inkling or introduction to that scene without streetwear come on man like let's be let's be for real would Rude got the same introduction to Belly too if he didn't have the introduction through streetwear like come on man like oh, I don't know man these I get it. I get it. It's more glitzy. There's 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 hotter girls there. The brand deals are nicer. You get given a you know people drive you around Paris in a car, chauffeur driven and stuff. You get flown out to places. You know what, what are you doing in streetwear? Someone's flying you out to a gender. It's probably not the most sexiest thing in the world. I understand, but come on, man, have some respect, bro. You know what I mean? Like don't don't kind of turn back around once you've crossed over the bridge and spit in our face. Jesus, but yeah, that Vanessa Freeman article is a big piece of shit. Personally, um, not not much there really in terms of actually offering anything insightful into what's happening with streetwear. It's not dead. As long as kids are wearing hoodies and going out in trainers, it's always going to exist. It's just a nonsense article just to kind of fill in some time and maybe to kind of keep it occupied because we're living in pandemic times. Who knows?